In the previous lecture, we looked at the types of sentence fragments that are caused by phrases. In this lecture, we're going to look at types of sentence fragments that are caused by dependent clauses, by nouns followed by modifiers, and by sentences beginning with and or but. Dependent clauses as fragments are the most common type of fragment, and these occur generally when the writer confuses a dependent clause with an independent clause. So, and part of that is because the dependent clause does have a subject and a verb, but it does not express a complete idea. So let's look at some examples. After I stopped drinking coffee, period, I began sleeping better at night. Here we have an introductory dependent clause after I stopped drinking coffee. It has a subject, I, and it has a verb, stopped. But because of the subordinating conjunction starting that clause, after, this, the idea is incomplete. After I stopped drinking coffee, what? What happened? So we need an independent clause to finish the thought. So after I stopped drinking, comma, I began sleeping better at night. The well, second one. Brian sat nervously at the dentist. That's a perfectly fine independent clause. It has a subject, Brian, it has a verb, sat, and it expresses a complete thought. He sat at the dentist. While waiting to have his tooth pulled, period. That is a dependent clause. It's not a complete thought. It is starts with the subordinating conjunction while, and waiting is a gerund, it's the subject, but there is no verb here. To have pulled is an infinitive phrase, so we have an incomplete thought here as well. The third one. Maria decided to throw away the boxes. Once again, it's a perfectly fine, depend, independent clause. Maria decided. But then we have following a relative clause that begins with the word that, that had accumulated for years in the basement. The relative clause has a subject, that it has the verb had accumulated, but it does not express a complete th thought, so it needs to be joined to the independent clause in order to make it a complete sentence. So on the previous slide, we saw some examples of dependent clauses as fragments. So how do we fix a dependent clause as a fragment? Well, as I suggested on the previous slide, in most cases, you'll fix the fragment by attaching the dependent clause to an independent clause. Now, that independent clause could come before the dependent clause or it could come after the dependent clause. So what it really what really depends on is where which to which independent clause does the dependent clause make sense to be attached to. So in our number one example before on the previous slide, after I stopped drinking coffee, comma, I began sleeping better at night. Remember when the dependent clause precedes the independent clause, we offset the dependent clause with a comma. But when the dependent clause follows the main clause, then we do not use a comma. Another way to fix a dependent clause fragment is to eliminate the dependent clause altogether and turn it into an independent clause by completing the thought or by adding a subject or by adding a verb, whatever is missing from the dependent clause. In most cases, the dependent clause is going to have a subject and a verb. Therefore, 
actually by definition a clause does have a subject and verb so if it's dependent clause it's going to have a subject and a verb but we need then maybe to add an object or something else to make the the thought complete so in the previous sentence we had <clears throat> the sentence while waiting to have his tooth pulled we can turn that into a full sentence by saying he was waiting to have his tooth pulled. So now we have two independent clauses. Brian sat nervously at the dentist. He was waiting to have his tooth pulled. Sometimes a noun followed by an adjective clause, such as a relative clause, causes a fragment. Today, I visited Hilda Cooper, a friend who is in the hospital. I was frightened by her loss of weight. The relative clause, who is in the hospital, functions as an adjective modifying a friend. Friend appears to be the subject, but there is no verb. What is happening to the friend? We could fix this fragment by attaching it to the previous sentence, making a friend who is in the hospital add a detail about Hilda Cooper. Or we could rewrite the sentence to add a subject and a verb. Today I visited Hilda Cooper, period. She is a friend who is in the hospital. Either one of these is a perfectly acceptable way to fix the sentence, but keep in mind what I said earlier, that we want to maintain sentence variety when we have a paragraph. So too many subject, verb, object sentences in a row causes a choppy essay. So generally we want to vary things. We don't want to have a independent clause followed by another independent clause followed by another independent clause. Uh, we want to mix up complex sentences with simple sentences and compound sentences. Another type of added detail fragment that we see co commonly is a fragment that lacks a subject and a verb and begins with words such as also, especially, except, for example, including such as. Here are a few examples. Tony has trouble accepting criticism, except from Lola. Now, clearly, except from Lola is a sentence fragment. Why would we write it that way? Because when we speak, we often would write, we'd pause after criticism. And then as an afterthought, or in this case, as I'm saying, added detail, except from Lola. We've added more detail while we're speaking. So we've come to a full stop. And then we say, oh, wait a minute, except for Lola. And that often will get written that way as a fragment. Or another example, my apartment has its drawbacks, period. For example, no hot water in the morning. I've worked at many jobs while in school, period. Among them, busboy, painter, and security guard. So you see in each of these cases, there's an there's added detail. It's almost as if the writer adds them or the speaker adds them as an afterthought. And that's why they mistakenly get written as a sentence fragment. So how do we fix the added detail fragments? We have a few choices. One way to fix them is to add the fragment to the complete thought that precedes it. Tony has trouble accepting criticism except from Lola. We don't need a comma, we don't need a period, we just need to attach that 
prepositional phrase, which is standing there out there by itself as a fragment, to the independent clause. Another way to fix one of these added detail fragments is to complete the sentence by adding a subject and a verb. So in our previous example, for example, no hot water in the morning, we could just add a subject and a verb. For example, there is no hot water in the morning. Now we have a complete sentence. Another way is to change the words to integrate the fragment into the preceding sentences. So, among I worked many jobs while in school, among them busboy, painter, and security guard. So, rewrite the whole sentence. Among the many jobs I've worked at while in school have been busboy, painter, and security guard. Another way that writers mistakenly create fragments is by beginning sentences with and, but, then, or therefore. For example, one example of my father's generosity is that he visits sick friends in, ho in the hospital, period, and takes along get well cards with a few dollars folded in them. Here we have a sentence fragment that begins with and, and takes along get well cards. Or a second example, the weightlifter grunted as he heaved the barbells into the air, then with a loud groan dropped them. Again we have a sentence fragment, then with a loud groan dropped them. In both of these cases, the fragment does not have a subject. So maybe the sentence fragment is caused because writers think the subject in one sentence will apply to the next group word group as well. But that's not true. Each word group must have a subject and a verb to make it a complete sentence. So, how do we fix fragments caused by missing subjects? One way to fix such a fragment is to attach the fragment to the preceding sentence. In our previous example, one example of my father's generosity is that he visits six friend, sick friends in the hospital and takes along get well cards with a few dollars folded in them. By just joining the fragment to the main clause, you see what we've done is we have one, one subject, he visits, and we have a compound verb, he visits and he takes. We don't repeat the subject, so we just say he visits and takes. Well, we talked about at the very beginning of the semester, an example of a compound verb with a single subject. Another way to fix the problem is to add the subject that's missing. In many cases, we would be able to replace a noun that was in the first word group and replace it with a pronoun that stands for the subject. So in our example, then with a loud groan, he dropped them. That would be a complete sentence because now we've added the inserted the subject he, and now we know who dropped them. He dropped them. So we have a complete sentence. I'd like to end this lecture with a couple of tips on how to check your papers for sentence fragments. One trick that I use is to read the paper aloud from the last sentence to the first. You'll be able better to see and hear whether each word group you read is a complete thought when you read it aloud and when you read it backwards so that you are not focusing on the entire paragraph. You're focusing on individual sentences. Another good technique is to ask yourself if any word group you think is a fragment. Does 
this contain a subject and a verb and express a complete thought. More specifically, be on the lookout for the most common fragments, dependent clause fragments, participial and infinite phrases as fragments, added detail fragments, and missing subject fragments.